Matt Simon from simonwoods.com here. Pinot Noir, the greatest grape in the world or the most frustrating grape in the world? Well, I think it's a bit of both. If you've ever had a great Pinot Noir, you'll know that it's one of those things that makes you go, Ooh. but unfortunately, trying to recapture that, even with a bottle of the same wine, like the day after, seems elusive. Um, don't know what it is, but um, hey. But I've got four Pinot Noirs today. First one, um, first two are from Burgundy, next two are from Australasia. Um, first one, Blasson de Bourgogne, 2007 Haute Côte de Beaune, and it's from, uh, Blasson de Bourgogne is, is a, it's a group of, um, group of cooperatives that have like pooled their resources with a bit of out, outside influence. I think a UK uh, person put, put it all together. This They got a few, a few co-ops who were doing similar but not quite the same thing um, and they thought right okay if you pool your viticultural, your winemaking and your marketing resources and your bottling line and stuff like that then um, the wines will end up being cheaper, the wines will end up getting more promotion, and so on and so on. And they've done pretty well with their, their, their white wines in particular. Let's see what this red's like. 2007 Haute Côte de Beaune. Oh, I don't know. There's a slightly dusty cardboard edge here. Um, it's the sort of wine, if I taste this at a... Uh, I go to quite a lot of tastings. I, if I taste this, I'd ask the winemaker, are you happy with this bottle? And uh, it may be that the next bottle will be exactly the same. It may be that there's, there's something slightly different here, but um, not sure about this one. Yeah, it seems quite unfair to judge it on, on the basis of that. There's a, yeah, there's a, a, a dusty chocolate cardboard. Have you, have you ever left um, chocolate coins, you know, those things that you get at, uh, at Christmas? for a year or two and then tasted them later. There's that dusty chocolate edge that I get there. I don't think that's what the winemaker would have wanted. Next one up, another Burgundy, Givry from Louis Latour. Now Givry, uh, if you go, the, the Oak Côte de Beaune, just go back to the first one. Uh, there's a place in Burgundy called the Côte d'Or, the Golden Slope, and that's where all the sexy names are, the Moussini, uh, the Corton Charlemagne, uh, Givry Chambertin and all, all that lot. Um, and um, and then higher up the slope, on the high slope, the Haute Côte, you get the Haute Côte de Beaune, and you get the Haute Côte de Nuit. Um, and they are, they're, they're usually pretty good sources of good value rather than great Burgundy. Givry is part of a group travelling south from the Côte d'Or. You get to the Côte Chalonnaise and you've got uh, Montagny, which is mainly white wines, uh, Mercury and Rui, which are a bit of both. Mercury's probably more on the red side, Rui maybe more, more on the white. Givry is very much red wine country. I think there is a bit of white wine there. And it's what I, it, it's a big, earthy, gutsy, um, not very subtle, but very tasty Burgundy. That's what I, th I think of as from Givry. And there's people there, like there's a winemaker there called Joblot. It's Joblo. Joblot, that's how it's spelt. And there's a Mr. Lump. L U M double P. So, uh, and this is Louis Latour. Uh, Louis Latour, better known for whites than reds. Um, they're reds. What they do is they pasteurise them. Um, don't know why. Ask them. They'll they'll tell you um, why. Uh, and some people say, does this give a homogeneous edge to the wines if they're all going through this heat treatment process, um, or is it the wine making that's gone on before that? Boop. But the wine smells okay. Yeah, nice bit of cherry, raspberry, um, some spice. Um, it's 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 good up front, and then really not very much after that. I like the smell. I like the it, when you first put it in your mouth. Then, mm, but certainly a step up from the Blasson, even though I think the Blasson maybe not what it could be. Next one, Villa Maria. Um, uh, Villa Maria Marlborough 2007 Reserve Pinot Noir. Now Marlborough uh, is known for its Sauvignon Blanc. When you come to Pinot Noir in New Zealand, 
Uh, there are two areas that spring to mind. Martinborough was probably the first to make its mark at the bottom end of the South Island, sorry, bottom end of the North Island. And the other one, the one that's um, the sexy one at the moment is um, Central Otago, way, way down the South Island. Uh, now, Marlborough has, can almost emulate those two, but for me it's never quite got there. It's got, it's got big honest flavours, but never quite the subtlety of the other two. Let's try this one and see if it's, uh, um, are my preconceptions are confirmed. Well, there's a lot of wine there. Deeper in colour than the two Burgundies, certainly a lot richer in flavour. I think a bit higher alcohol too. And um, I, I notice a, a bit, bits of vanilla and uh, edges of smokiness from the oak and very, very plush fruit. But if I have a problem with it, um, what I see when I think of great Burgundy, and which for me is the benchmark for Pinot Noir, there's a mixture of the plush fruit with the haunting fragrance. This has got the plush fruit, but not the fragrance. It's um, it's it's very nice. It's very pretty, uh, but it's the sort of wine that I would be happy to spend an evening with. But that will be it. Yeah, fair enough wine. Very nice, yeah, as I say, you'd happily polish off a, a bottle of that between two of you, but um, I don't think you've been maybe rushing out to buy um, another case of it. Maybe another bottle of it, certainly, but uh, not another case of it. Final wine, uh, De Bortoli, Yarra Valley, Pinot Noir, 2007. Now, De Bortoli, um, home territory for the De Bortoli family is the Riverina region in, uh, is it the bottom end of New South Wales or the top end of Victoria? I think it's the bottom end of New South Wales. And they, the, the wine that they became famous with was their Sautern, their Botrytis Semion, which they label Noble One now. But a few years ago, they bought uh, this a place in the Yarra Valley. And uh, the guy that uh, makes the wine there, he's married to one of the de Bortoli families. He's, he's called Steve Weber. And whereas people think of Australian wines as being upfront fruit, Steve Weber's aim is to underplay that fruit and for other elements to, uh, to assert themselves on top of the fruit. So the fruit is just merely one of a number of things going on in a wine. Let's see how he's got on with his 2007. Well, it smells actually that he's done pretty well with it because um, I stick my nose in there and the fragrance that was missing in the in the Villa Maria you're getting more of that seductive haunting coffee edge um, almost like a, if, if you know the northern end of well the, if you know the middle of the uh, the Cote d'Or uh, places like uh, Corton I get that, uh, that, 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 that that coffee edge coming through in, in quite a lot of Corton Mm. Mm. And other, I don't know whether it's it's weird when you you sell you smell something like coffee. You never quite know whether it's from the vineyard or from the wood. And I've been proved wrong on countless occasions as to whether it's oh, oh this smells really is this too oaky? No, it hasn't been in oak at all. Um, anyway, I think that this is a bit of both. They uh, the the oak some some sometimes with Pinot Noir you get oak and fruit and they talk to each other but they never make beautiful music. Here it's almost like the oak is like a, a shallow bowl and the, the wine is sloshing round inside. It smells good. Mm. Well it's the last wine of the tasting so I'm not going to spit it out. But that is good and I think it's going to get better and better. At the moment, I notice that structure, I notice the acidity, um, I notice, um, I know the oak doesn't poke out, but it feels like I want to be wooed by it later on tonight. So I'm going to be, it's lunchtime now, I'm going to try and be hands off, I'm going to try honestly, um, but uh, I think I'm going to pour myself a rather large glass this evening. See you later.